welcome to this completely unnecessary podcast for Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Oh, it's getting cold outside. Christmas chimes are are, are a blowing. What? That's not an expression. That's Ian Ferguson. <laughs> I'm Pat Contry. I, I'm still waking up from that CBD gummy. On the show today, we'll be talking about uh, the I Am Jesus game. Uh, an Intellivision update. Ooh, we have insider info. Um, and then a Polymega uh, update. And then a few trailers and a, a Dr. Disrespect TV show we'll maybe talk about. And uh, and a Patreon poll talk. Maybe a Q&A if I see there's something nice to talk about. Ian, uh, how, how was your weekend? It was fine. I, uh, I didn't really do much of anything, honestly. I made more soup. And I'll probably make soup again today. It's just my new hobby is making soup. Why don't you do it on Twitch? In, in real life, uh, soup maker. Yeah. You should do that. Yeah. Are you set up for the Twitch? Are you, have you been streaming lately? No, no. Streaming is terrifying and awful. Um, but I have not been doing it lately. Is, is that is that is that video review coming anytime soon? Yeah, actually, it is. Oh, okay. I get off my ass. I was gonna say it was like because we're like six months, uh, six, six months, six weeks out. You said it's coming out of that. Yeah. Well, what is it on again? It's on Crossnick. Oh, on Crossnick. We talked about that on my the, brother. Uh, yeah. Yeah, your brother made that. Um, I have like 15 hours into that game. I didn't realize. 15 I, hours? Yeah, I didn't realize I played so much. And I'm awful at it, too, is the thing. It's going to be a great review, then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Real quick, we got enamel pins. We do. Uh, go to go to ultimatenintendo.com. That's that's where my store redirect is. And you can get some nice enamel pins of the PCU podcast. Uh, and if you want the book, I recommend ordering it by like Saturday the 14th to guarantee that it'll arrive. Hopefully before Christmas, because obviously the post office gets slower like the week before with all the d- extra you know stuff in there. So get on to ultimatenintendo.com and check out the wares, pins, books right there. And uh, it's it's moving like gangbusters on Amazon right now. So I'm glad it's on there too. But go 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 to the but help me out. Go to the web store instead. <laughs> the Amazon takes a pretty penny uh, from the sales. Uh, not for resale. We're we're finally finishing up the Blu-ray there. There's a couple of extra little things we had to smooth out with the audio. Uh, our pal Yoshi had to help with a couple of CG shots, but you won't see what they are because it's like CG that you don't notice. It's like background stuff. Ooh, um, fancy! Check that out. Speaking of Yoshi, check out the new, the new, uh, the new AVGN Pat Combat video came out a week ago, featuring Karate Champ. <laughs> there, I think it's probably the first time I've worn this shirt ever, or since that video where I had it in my hand there. Um, and there's there's a couple of uh, there's a few trailers that have come out literally they all came out within like like 18 hours of each other. Uh, Ian, you check out the Ryan Reynolds NPC movie called Free Guy. Yeah, I I don't know whatever. None of these there's <laughs> there's three trailers that came out. Ryan Reynolds uh, the well, let's the start with the first one. Yeah, I don't I had no interest in it. I don't. Well, this is um. You know, they say it's from the studio that brought you Disney, but it's really a 20th Century Fox film that in, that was being produced before the merger. Right. Because I don't, I don't see Disney wanting to do a movie like this. No. Necessarily. And plus, Ryan Reynolds had that relationship with uh, Fox before with, from uh, Deadpool. But so, so Ryan Reynolds is playing like a bank teller, and the first clue is something's amiss. He opens up his closet, and you know, there's all the same outfits: khaki pants, blue shirt. His, his apartment building's called apartment building. He steps out of. And then, you know, all this violence is happening around him with people on motorcycles and things getting shot. Uh, not a lot of people actually getting hurt, though, like actually shot, because that's what, really what a GTA-style game is. But it's like a GTA-style game. There's like uh, someone robbing a bank and the cops are chasing, chasing them. You know, people are shooting guns in the air. And Ryan Reynolds is like, oh, this is our life. We're getting robbed again. So they're giving a life to, you know, the NPC character who then finds out that, oh, I can fight back and I can be a hero by putting on like these glasses and he sees the video game world. You know, and it looks like a floofy, you know, fun action movie that you'll forget as soon as you like step out of the theater and take a piss. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, it's a it's a neat concept for a movie. I just I don't know. I have no interest in watching it. Yeah, you know, Ryan Reynolds uh, before Deadpool did not have the the best uh, uh, track record for being a leading man in, in movies and action movies, and Deadpool sort of finally put him on that sort of map where he's like a bankable star. Sure. So hopefully that this you know that sort of gets him in here. And obviously, it helped with Detective uh, Pikachu uh, there as well. I, I mean, it looks fine. I I probably won't see this until it's f- for free on TV. <laughs> but you know, right. they, they give you know the, the quintessentially gets the the female sidekick. She's a British British lass. She's shooting up things, and he's all of a sudden he's like a superhero, knows how to do all the shit. 
So it is what it is. I just think it's it's rough to have a neutered action movie when when the games these are based upon are ultra Aren't. are yeah. ultra violent video games sure. where you're like shooting grandma walking along the street, you know. And, and this is like, oh, someone's thrown out a window. It's like, well, that's well, you not can what the game shoot is. grandma. It's not like everyone shoots grandma. Yeah, but I mean, that's what happens in the games. People are getting shot, <laughs> you know, constantly. You know, <laughs> like you can shoot grandma. You don't have to. Um, and then, and then we move on to uh, uh, the Wonder Woman 1984 trailer. I'm oh. fucking over it. I'm fucking over the 80s shit. Um, <laughs> I, I think when, when I, were you officially over it? Years ago. I, I I got sick of it super super quick. And I admit, after that, Stranger Things, before Stranger Things, before Stranger Things. Yes. Okay. But I I because of where I work and in in what I deal with, I was dealing with 80s nostalgia up front and in my face all the time, constantly. So. I get that I burned out on it earlier than most people did. And that's that's fine. I'm not saying that there's anything inherently wrong. It's a fine aesthetic. It's a cozy aesthetic. But I, I think starting... I think I think Stranger Things was really when I... I it was peak. I mean, here's... Peak, the, I will probably it. watch Stranger Things at some point. I still have oh, it. You have it. Okay. But I was already sick of it by the time Stranger Things came out. That's why I avoided it. I, I was just so sick of the, hey, this is the 1980s. Look at what we're doing in the 1980s. The 1980s is fucking popular, so here's something else in the goddamn 1980s. And, I mean, we're, what, we're four years beyond Stranger Things now? The first season coming out? First season was, yeah, they skipped a year. So three or four years ago, yeah. So, I mean... 2015 or 16, yeah. I don't... I, I think this movie, if I just look at it, it looks like a fine movie. I will probably see this one, but it it wants to lean so heavily on that fucking aesthetic, well, and it's driving me nuts. Half the trailer's in the mall. Yeah. I'm guessing that there's a Walden books. Everything's bright and colorful. But look, 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 okay, here's the thing about the 80s. Yes, people were wearing members-only jackets, and yes, people had leg warmers here and there. Not everyone did. Right. People still dressed normally because people were still dressing if they're older from the 70s. Like, when people make these period films, not everything was up to date. Not everyone had a 1983 car. People were still wearing shit from 10 years ago or driving 10 years ago. Well, I mean, you know, if like you're going to lean... Errors bleed together. Yeah, I get it. If you're going to lean on the aesthetic, that's what you want. You, sure. But, but, but that means uh, you're more... It, it, to me, it, it's a worrying sign that you're more concerned with the aesthetic of it than anything else in, yes. in the movie. Um, I'm sure this has a fine plot. You got Chris Pine back. Uh, somehow he survived getting killed in World War One. I. I guess that's interesting. I'm kind of surprised to see him back, but they had a good good chemistry together. Uh, I love Pedro Pascal. Like The more I see him, like I love him even in small ro roles. He's great. That's, yeah. that's one reason I want to see The Mandalorian. And the great, uh, the 80s greed guy is a great villain yes. role. It's I fantastic. mean, that, that's that's a fantastic... I, I think that that's not a problem. It's just there are other there are other decades. There are other things going on. You could make it modern. You don't necessarily need to lean on the 80s stuff. Or if it has to be in well, 80s for... If it has to be in the 80s for storyline reasons, you don't have to call it Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Versus just Wonder Woman two, <laughs> you know. Right. There's, I, I mean, you're you're really trying to draw people in with that aesthetic if you're putting the 1984, um, in the title. Unless you know, it's what about Wonder Woman in the 60s? That could have been interesting, or even 70s, early 70s. Well, 70s has social... been done to death too, and that's what I was oh, gonna yeah, say. It's but... not like this is unique with the 80s. This was done a decade prior with the 70s shit. Sure. I think it was, her armor looks great because she's she's had in the, in the comics at one point, right? The golden armor. I like how she rides the lightning with the with the um, with her whip there. Um, yeah, like he's got a fanny pack on in '84, and he's got the track suit on. Chris Pine at the end of the trailer. I'm like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> you know, like that's I understand it. But what's interesting about this is that, like when we were kids in the '80s, it would have been like how people were nostalgic for the '50s because people would have been in their '30s sure. nostalgic for the '50s. And there, by that, it was sort of like dying out. There, was, yeah, you, Happy Days started in the '70s, and by the mid '80s, it was done. It right. was off TV, and that was really it. You had, you know, I don't, I don't remember like uh, girls in high school weren't wearing stuff from the '50s, but, but young women now are wearing '80s stuff again. So sure. the '80s fashion is sort of like this weird, sort of kitschy. A thing that survived more so than any other era that we've seen so far, because I wasn't expecting girls to wear like the, you know, the half cut off sweater off their shoulder. I'm like, you know, that's from the bell 80s? bottoms and shit came back in, from from the 70s too. I think the 70s. I think we're seeing the exact same thing happen with the 80s that we saw happen with the 70s. And I think the people who grew up a decade before us were just as sick and tired of it as we are now. I don't think it's very unique, except for the hair. 
the hair has not come back. That's fine. From the 80s. My sister's teased hair, I do not see young women having that. So that has not sort of come back. But some 80s hairstyles I guess have. Now I'm thinking about it. You know, some of like the, the, you know, the ponytail and short hair thing, some of it. But yeah, not the... But yeah, but the, not the tease hair. That that'll stay dead forever, hopefully. I hope so. <laughs> the the big feathered uh, hair from guys too. I don't think that's come back. No, feathered hair was one of the worst worst. Did you know? Did, did, did you know anyone that had a feathered hair? Not really. Guys, no. lots of guys had long hair in the neighborhood. Like they had longer hair, but no, sure. the feathered thing. I didn't see that. They had the Guns and Roses long, like Axl Rose hair. Yeah, that's what they had. You know, and not like the big Bon Jovi <laughs> you know, looking hair there. Um, and then finally. We have, which one is obviously has people talking, is the Ghost Life, Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer. Um, and so this this surprised a lot of people because the tone is was almost non-comedy. It was very dramatic and um, almost, it, yeah, it's it, it shot and, and looks like a drama. The cinematography is beautiful. They're out in the country for a Ghostbusters movie, uh, which I think a lot of people weren't expecting. It's whether or not they stay the whole movie there. And it's uh, Egon Egon's grandkids, two grandkids that... Uh, find I guess the equipment, and then you have um, uh, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd come in as like a like a science teacher, telling him, explaining them, oh, this is real stuff from thirty years ago, you know. And then they're off and running. Um, it, uh, it's intriguing for sure to take this approach, but I think after uh, the the reboot that failed, um, it'd be interesting to see, you know, how grounded this is in terms of not having comedy. But it's definitely, I mean, you got you got Finn Wolf Wolfhard from Tr Stranger Things, so it's a Stranger Things type of vibe. But that's an 80s sort of mystery tone thing, anything. Stranger Things was the first movie that did that, and that's a homage anyway to, like, you know, the Goonies and Stephen King stuff. But, uh, no, it's intriguing. I, 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 I'm not sure I'll see it in the theaters, but it's intriguing. I'm not a huge Ghostbusters person, so. Yeah, yeah. I never was either. I liked the first two movies well enough. I didn't see the remake or the reboot. Um and I, I don't know that I ever will. Uh, but honestly, I mean, the reboot at least looked more in line with the original two movies than, sure. than this. I mean, for all of the bluster and the crying about four women and then all, all this, I, I think that it at least looked like it made sense to me that that was a Ghostbusters movie. Sure. Um, this doesn't. I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, Ghostbusters fans will know that better than I will. But it's still not something that I'm particularly interested in seeing uh, the, the, uh, doing some pat math it doesn't work that these are egon's grandkids sure it does no it doesn't Ian, because they're like 14 years old these kids so that means he has to have had, had kids right away 30 years ago and then th th then his then his kids had kids when they were like 17 you know like <laughs> you're really you're really getting the math close there ghostbusters I came out in what 84 but the sequel was 89 and they said it they haven't been seen in 30 years ghost so that's referencing the 89 movie uh straight off uh paul red says mm -hmm. that it's close i'm just surprised that they didn't go young adult that they went kids i was gonna say because uh, like my my my, nie my nieces and nephews are like like eight so yeah they'd have to be like twice the age eh, yeah it's they're it, fudging it it's by close. like six seven yeah, years at least uh, it's, well, okay, <laughs> unless it was like a you know like a high school sort of thing where the Econ's kids had kids in high school. Anyway, I'm just surprised they didn't go young adult. Um, not that it's a bad thing. There, there was ghost, there was like Ghostbusters cartoon that I've never seen. That's supposed to be good when they're all like younger kids. Um, that came out like 15 years ago, and people said that was a really good uh, Ghostbusters cartoon. I'd never seen it. I don't uh, know anything about it. Was it Ghostbusters Extreme or something? I don't know. Anyway, but it seems to be taking inspiration from that, because in that one, I think Egon was still around to teach the kids, and this one you got Paul Rudd. Um, and then the, the other cast members are coming back, um, at least the other three Ghostbusters, from what we know, they're coming back to reprise their roles. And, you know, it's, it's sort of the thing like, yeah, that should have been the last movie. I mean, it should have been a continuation. And that's, this is, people are getting what they want with this. So there you go. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see that it, 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 if people are sick of the kids thing with after after Stranger Things and after it coming out, I thought I saw it on TV. It was pretty good. Uh, the remake. I never ever saw the original. I didn't see a chapter two. The first part um, is good. The ch chapter two didn't get as good of reviews, but I haven't seen that yet. I heard but... chapter two is creepy because they rewrote it in the kids, and the kids had aged by then a year and a half, and they were significantly older. They had to like de-age them, and you could tell they were being de-aged, and their voices were already different, and it was like, uh, they shouldn't have had the kids in part two, like for flashbacks, I guess, or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, weird. Chapter two. But, um, okay, that, that's it with, with Ghostbusters. That comes out uh, next year, and it's, it's uh, Ivan Reitman's uh, son doing it, so there's some lineage there, so that's cool.